No one can predict the future, but we can make a pretty good guess about the Madam Web box office. From too late sequels to spin-offs no one asked for, these are the movies we bet you won't see in 2024. Sony's universe of something about Spider-Man is the weirdest thing going in movies right now. The Venom movies have done pretty well for themselves by embracing stupidity, but Kraven the Hunter looks like a different story. Why do you think it'll bomb? Three words. It's Morbin time. The Spider-Man spin-off Morbius was DOA at the box office, earning a malnourished $162 million against a $75 million budget. The little cash it did manage to rake in was not nearly enough to justify Matt Smith's take on the emo Peter Parker dance, and certainly not enough to justify another Spidey spin-off in Craven the Hunter. Craven stars Aaron Taylor Johnson as weirdly accentless Russian big game hunter Sergei Kravinov, who is left for dead by his father after being mauled by a lion because, and this is a quote, he's weak like his mother. Boo! But it's not just any lion either, it's a magic lion or something, with magic blood that gives him the magic power to kill people. He basically ends up as a land-based Aquaman, a Tiger King if you will. I don't think we're done blowing shit up today. Craven the Hunter might end up being a decent movie, but all signs so far are that the audience isn't there for it. Characters like Craven and the Rhino are at their most interesting when they're fighting Spider-Man. Without him, these villain movies feel like they don't really have a point. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. With $8.9 billion in the bank worldwide across 10 films, Spider-Man is about as close to a sure thing as you're going to get at the box office. But his amazing friends? Yeah. We already predicted that Craven the Hunter will flatline at the box office, and Madame Webb will fare no better, even though it does look a lot funnier. Dakota Johnson stars in the film as Cassie Webb aka Madame Webb, whose psychic powers give her the ability to see within the spider world. It's a slam dunk concept. Look how excited she is to be there. I have always really loved Marvel movies. Hilarious. This doesn't look like a slow motion car crash at all. We're not sure who the audience for this movie is, but our Peter Tingle is telling us it'll be pretty small. It's not working though. I heard it wasn't working right now. Is it? It is working. Well, I don't, I don't know Good. if it's working. Okay, so you got Peter Tingle. As funny as the first trailer is, Morbius already proved that memes don't make the movie. But we'll give Sony this. At least it does look like a slightly better idea than that Aunt May movie they were rumored to be thinking about 10 years ago. You're not Superman, you know. <laughs> Some of the greatest comedies ever paired their laughs with a little dollop of dread. Think Ghostbusters and Beetlejuice, or even spooky spoofs like Young Frankenstein and Scary Movie. But the horror comedy shrunken head juggling act is a tough one to master. It's a subgenre that has left a pile of cinematic corpses in its wake. For example, see 2022's Renfield. Yeah, no, not many of you did. As a vampire comedy sucked up an anemic $26 million worldwide on an $86 million budget. Turns out Nicolas Cage as Count Dracula wasn't an exciting enough premise to get people out of their coffins. In 2024, we'll be getting another classic horror character, but with comedy, in Lisa Frankenstein. Bogus. Bogus. Described as a coming of rage love story, which fine, we sort of hate how clever that is. The genre bending flick is about a young girl who develops a relationship with a reanimated corpse. Because, you know, puberty isn't gross and gooey enough, or whatever. Lisa Frankenstein was written by Oscar winner Diablo Cody, who won gold for Juno. But more importantly, she pens Jennifer's body. While Jennifer's body is a cult classic now, it's underwhelmed with $31 million in 2009. Without Megan Fox at the height of her star power in the lead, we predict that Lisa Frankenstein may raise the dead, but it won't raise a ton of money. In other words, it might have been better to keep this idea buried. <sighs> MoveOn.org, needy, it's over. Following the decades of sequels, prequels, reboots, and remakes, we're always interested in an original premise. But there is one big thing with original premises. The audience has to know what the hell is actually going on, at least if you want it to make any money. Frankly, the upcoming Argyle has us scratching our heads. At first glance, it's similar to Romancing the Stone or The Lost City with a mousy spy novelist, Ellie Conway, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, getting tossed into a real-world tale of espionage. Also, Catherine O'Hara is in it. This time, not dressed as a mutated crow-human hybrid, 
and Mermaid Ken and Barbie, obviously. But that's not meta enough for our postmodern, post-Deadpool sensibilities, right? That's why the movie also follows the character Argyle, portrayed by Henry Cavill with a Bart Simpson haircut. Turns out Argyle is Conway's superstar sleuth, who, so far as we can tell, is real in his story, but still a fictional character in Conway's story. Or maybe not? This is the kind of premise that depends on a star cast to sell it, and admittedly, this one is packed more densely than Jason Statham's leopard print undies. That said, Cavill's last name above the title spy movie 2014's The Man From U.N.C.L.E. was so sneaky that it came and went with only $105 million worldwide on a $75 million budget. Jury's still out on whether flying that low under the radar makes it a good spy movie or not. Like Red Notice or Extraction, we think Argyle has a license to kill on a streamer, but as a movie that people leave home and pay money to see, there's no disguising it. Argyle is a turkey, <laughs> and it probably won't be gobbling up those sweet, sweet box office bucks. Thanks to Yellowstone, Kevin Costner went from being one of the biggest movie stars of the 1990s to one of the biggest TV stars right now. So basically the same big-time A-lister, except he's traded in his badass Waterworld Trimaran for an AARP membership. You think you want to keep riding that gravy train, uh, boat, but the lore of the silver screen is too much. In 2024, Costner will return to the director's chair for the first time in 21 years, acting in and directing the two-part epic Horizon and American Saga. So we predict he won't have just one bomb, but two. Oh, thank God. Sure, the promotion will highlight the fact that Costner directed 1990's Dances with Wolves, while conveniently neglecting to mention that he didn't exactly push the envelope with his massive 1997 bomb, The Postman. Couple that with Waterworld struggling to stay afloat with audiences in 1996, and you can see why Costner's big screen career never recovered. You bought Tin Cup? That's a terrible movie. You mean classic? I like Tin Cup. But it's a bad movie, right? You ever see it? No, I didn't see it. Will he leverage his role as the patriarch of TV's Dutton clan into a cinematic comeback? Doubtful. While we don't know the exact budget, we do know Costner ponied up $20 million of his own money to help fund his dream project, which he's wanted to do so since 1988. So either Horizon is too expensive, or he's having trouble finding finances. Probably both. Primed to out Snorfest a beekeeper when it comes to boring ass titles, The Bricklayer is scheduled for a day and date release, meaning it will likely be released in theaters and via streaming video on demand at the same time. This is clearly not a movie that's looking to break records in theaters or even make back its budget, so at least they're keeping the expectations in check. Based on a novel of the same name by former FBI agent Paul Lindsay, writing under the pen name Noah Boyd, the bricklayer stars Aaron Eckhart, not as a sweaty, mortar-splattered construction worker, but as a rebellious former FBI operative who comes out of retirement to stop some bad guys. We dig Eckhart, but we might be the only ones, as his box office footprint is pretty faint when you take The Dark Knight, and the insert thing that fell here has fallen franchise out of the equation. Meanwhile, The Bricklayer is directed by Rennie Harlan, who had a moment as an A-list action director in the early 1990s, with hits like Die Hard 2 and Cliffhanger, before Cutthroat Island ultimately sank his reputation like a stone. Given its lack of box office bona fides, we expect The Bricklayer to lay an egg. Death, taxes, and sequels to old action movies that your dad really wants you to like are the three things you can always count on. Normally, would be okay with the last one. But even the most passionate Prometheus apologists among us are left wondering, do we really need another Alien movie? At least Alien Romulus is an original, or well, as original as the ninth film in a franchise can be before things start getting all failed clony. <laughs> Said to be a standalone film and connected to the previous entries, the potentially extra terrible extraterrestrial flick is based on an original pitch by director Fede Alvarez. Alvarez directed 2013's Evil Dead, which admittedly was better than it had any right to be, and shows he has the horror bona fides to back up his ideas. Creatively, the Alien franchise has been hit or miss since the one-two punch of Ridley Scott's Alien in 1979 and James Cameron's Aliens in 1986. The concept of spooky, scary spaceships stocked with spooky, scary aliens seems like it will lend itself to a metric buttload of insidious ingenuity. 
but the series' creative stagnation has hit it right in the box office. Case in point, Alien Covenant made a whopping 41% less than Prometheus, pulling in $238 million versus the latter's $402 million. So heartbreaking it almost makes your chest burst. Oh no, not again. <sighs> While the film was originally destined for Hulu release like the Predator prequel Prey, 20th Century Studios switched gears and decided to drop it in theaters. We're not saying that releasing Alien Romulus in theaters is a bad idea, but based on the series' downward slide, we just don't see Alien Romulus getting anywhere near the franchise's 70s and 80s heydays. And in space, no one can hear your razzy speech. What's scarier than one tornado? Well, we could be talking about an EF-5 Sharknado on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. 30 years after Twister, we're seeing double with Twisters, a movie about tornadoes, just like the original. Hey Hollywood, tell us you're running out of ideas without saying you're running out of ideas. The third one's just gonna be Twister with a three in it. Yes, Twister was an $88 million movie that in 1996 earned an exceptional $495 million adjusted for inflation that is literally almost a billion dollars. With that in mind, it's kind of surprising that it took this long for tornado season to come around again. The studio is going to be hoping for Top Gun Maverick numbers, but we're thinking this one will perform closer to Speed 2 Cruise Control. For starters, there are reportedly no stars from the original movie coming back to ground the movie in nostalgia. There's also zero reason for Twisters to exist besides making money, which isn't enough to get audiences to show up. People see through this kind of thing now. You got us with Star Wars, but come on, Twister? Who wants to go back to that world? If we're gonna go back to Oklahoma, I'd rather watch Leonardo DiCaprio try and kill the flower moon. Now that's cinema, right, Marty? I don't mean to be flip about it, but it is, you're right. What's John Wick without John Wick? Or the stunt team from John Wick? And with the director of Underworld instead of the director of John Wick? Well, we're all gonna find out whether we like it or not. John Wick is a rare series that made more money with each sequel. The $432 million box office the fourth film made is almost five times the $87 million that the original made nine years earlier. That kind of growth is almost unheard of in modern Hollywood, and pretty much demands a sequel treatment until the cash stops coming in. Frankly, we have zero issues with Lionsgate making John Wick chapter whatever follow-ups until Keanu Reeves registers for social security. But that's the thing, isn't it? Keanu Reeves is only one man. So realizing this conundrum, Lionsgate is attempting to create a John Wick cinematic universe, but without John Wick. Why? First, there was the three-part limited prequel series, The Continental. Oh, sorry, The Continental from the world of John Wick on Peacock. I'm a peacock, Captain. You gotta let me fly on this one. You know what, Terry? Let's just settle this. Peacocks don't fly. Next, there's the spin-off Ballerina, which presumably has something to do with that ballerina scene in John Wick 3. Call us crazy, but it's not the John Wick universe that moviegoers love. It's Keanu Reeves doing a tactical reload with the confidence of a guy who actually knows how to do it. It's Keanu Reeves doing karate versus cars at the age of 59. When you remove the star from the franchise, you get Triple X State of the Union, The Bourne Legacy, and 29 Jump Street. We're sure Ana de Armas will be on point as a title ballerina. We just don't think the movie will make a lot of money. Now, John Wick Chapter 5? <sighs> Breathe. 